He had a big beard. I think it was ginger. Big gingery beard. He's got a big ginger beard. Big ginger beard. A big ginger beard. Dot Trek had a ginger beard. But yeah, there'll be a ginger beard. Going to be a gingery beard. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. It's only two weeks since our last update because we're doing an entire mini Taylor Four Gamers in seven weeks total. So yeah, updates coming fast. Thanks for gathering. Everyone has made some sort of progress into the world of uh, Warhammer Underpants in some way, shape or form. But I'm going to mention the biggest bit of progress, which is we have a date. We are going to play a day of Warhammer Underpants at Warhammer World on Good Friday, 15th of April. And that's the plan. We're going to go up on the Thursday night, maybe play some Warhammer 5th edition and then hang around all day playing Shadespire. So anyone who wishes to join us, that is where we'll be in the bar of Warhammer World uh, playing Shady Spires. There is a very real concern, of course, now there'll be so many people who want to come and play Shadespire that uh, Warhammer World will be overwhelmed with thousands and thousands of Arbitrarian fans. I mean, it, it, you're, you're right that it's a small concern. <laughs> 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 but it is technically possible. <laughs> it's Easter weekend after all, it might be quite busy. We should probably like book some tables or something. Yeah, probably. Might not be a bad idea. I'm yeah. Sort of um, around the corner. Yeah. There's a load of people in the pub looking at us going. We could just say we're eating loads of burgers all day. We could just eat loads of burgers all day. We could do that as well. We could, <laughs> we could just get some tables at the start of the day and get never some move. And some burgers, yeah. Okay, so that's what's happening though. So <laughs> anyone is welcome to come along with your Underworlds gang and um, gang band, war, war band team gang, and uh, play us. But Gary's very good at this. The rest of us aren't. Well, you know, I might be unwittingly good and not realise how good I am at it. Well, and with that, let's start with you, Ross. So it's been two <laughs> weeks since you announced that you were an ogre pirate. Gar! And he has been started. So how's the modelling coming along? Um, yeah, it's actually really fun to paint. I've not even started the Noblars or the Monkey. I've put base colours on my parrot. I've decided right. it's obviously a parrot, not anything else. And I've painted quite a lot of, I want to say Garlock. I can't really see him because it's quite dim where I'm sat. Mm -hmm. um, he looks a lot better in, in actual photos, which you've got and you can share at this precise moment, perhaps. Yeah, it's been really nice to paint. I've, I've sort of gotten quite a bit done. I'm thinking I can manage to pull off quite a nice end result if I manage to not balls anything up. But so far, it's going quite fun brilliant so going well uh is it a good it's a nice kit to paint or is it just the fact that it's just one model is is what's good about it i think it's nice to have like one big model and four small ones i mean the four small ones i'll try and put a lot of attention into but they are so small that even then they still shouldn't take long but it is nice just to spend ages painting one big one model thing. and put a lot of time and effort into it yeah. um i think I, I i did sort of ponder a little while ago painting some busts and i think painting something like this is probably the closest i've ever come to painting a bust. I mean, it's nowhere near as big as just a bust, obviously, but it's it's a different um, different way of painting almost. Mm. Yeah, I've never I've never done anything like that. I suppose because I'm not a fan of painting. Like, I don't enjoy the act of painting. Mm. So I enjoy having things I've painted that look good, but I don't enjoy doing it. So usually painting something for a game is what gets me to paint them. Mm. I, I'm lucky that I actually enjoy sitting down and just um, zoning out. I, I tend to sort of either listen to football in the afternoon on a Saturday or um, sit there and just, I've, I've been re-watching season one of Picard and things like that. Just, you know, background listening. I, I relax a lot while I do it. So I quite, I actually, I actually really like painting. Cool. So I don't mind uh, once in a while spending a lot of time on one thing. Of course, you know, sometimes you've got a unit of 20 to paint, you just have to power through. Mm. But painting something like this is a, is a lovely change of pace. And yeah. uh, we got some games in, which were your first games in a while. How, how, did, yeah. how did you find that? Yeah, the first game, I'm trying to think, was it, I think the final score was 26, glory to two? I thought it was 17 it? to two, but okay, yeah, well, I'll I take 26. It was, no, 17 to one at the end of the second turn. I think it landed up even worse in the end, didn't it? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. So, it was so nasty anyway. <laughs> me and Russ <laughs> went to Bad Moon Cafe, which I'd never been to before, yeah. and um, played some uh, some Underworlds last week. So I took along Lady Harrow's Mourn Flight because they were more or less painted. And I just, uh, when I got there, opened Illusory Might, I want to call it. 
Um, I, I don't even know the name of the deck. I opened it when I got there and then shuffled it and started playing with it, not even having flipped through what cards were in the deck. <laughs> yeah, so Illusory Might is one of the Rivals decks they make now for when you're playing Rivals, as in you're playing with your faction cards, but you don't have a faction that has enough cards. They were quite fun to play against. They had a nice little... Insp uh, their Inspire mechanic is if they uh, spook through you. So the Inspire mechanic was really fun, actually, uh, and, and it feels really thematic. The other ones I've got that I haven't yet finished painting, I've got Dreepers somebody's. R Dreepers Wraith Creepers. That might be. That's, that's yeah, right. That sounds right. So I've got them as well, and they've got, I think, the same same mechanic, and I think that's quite nice for anything ghosty. But yeah, the mechanic was fun, and in the second game, obviously, I managed to scrape a 7-7 seven, seven draw against Thundrix. Uh, yeah, against Thundrix Profiteers. Your ones. My, my ones that I'm doing for this. Yeah. That was your first game in a long time, though, as well. Yeah, I think it was like my fourth or fifth game ever. Yeah, I think the last time I played was about a year or year and a half ago against my wife um who, who beat me as well even though it's her first game and it takes it does take you a little a game or two to get your head around how it mm. works it's a really fun game though um, you said it yourself on thursday evening considering you literally only have 12 sort of actions in the entire game plus playing a bunch of cards um there's a lot going on and a lot of decision making you know compared to some games that we've sort of i'm mean, not exactly bad mouth sort of ninth edition and aos mm. um but sort of spoken about well sometimes it feels like there's not enough tactical decision making whereas shade spire yeah it feels like there's a lot of decisions to be made and ideas to be kept in your head simultaneously yeah yeah so yeah i, I really really like the game great brilliant but so far, I haven't played with the Pirates. No, I'm going to save that until they're painted, or at least till the big guy's painted, which will hopefully be, I don't know, I reckon it's going to take me at least another week or so, maybe two weeks to paint him. But he's moving along. I'm pleased. I've been posting sort of little teaser shots of him on Instagram, and I'm really pleased with his trousers so far. <laughs> so hopefully the rest will go as well. So Russ has got fantastic trousers. <laughs> Bobby, how are you doing? So you've you've been painting. So yeah, I've uh, I've started painting. Um, I've got four figures who are all about equally as detailed, and yeah, it took me a while to work out exactly what I wanted to do with the scheme. I'm still not entirely sure what colours I want to do with all the little baubles and pouches and whatnot they've got. So it's going to take me a while to to actually get them finished, but um, I'm getting there, getting there with them. Did you uh, find all the spare parts you needed? I did, yes. Luckily, I, I managed to find a web store that had the head that I needed to fix my figure. Did you get exactly the same one again, or did you get a different one? Oh, no, one? I, I, I got a head from the uh, the Blood Knight kit. Right. Because it uh, got some nice uh, female uh, vampire heads to, okay. to stick on them. Great. I think I remember seeing the build you did, actually, because I think it was a grey head on a red body, wasn't it? Yeah. And and you've not had a chance to get any games in, but you've been, it sounds yeah. like you've been going through some of the cards and the rules and things yeah i've not played any games yet i did get the the essentials deck as well mm -hmm. i had a, a guess at what things i wanted to do which is not play any objectives and just beat the absolute snot out of everyone because <laughs> i'm playing vampires I, th I think that's a fair tactic in current underworlds yeah you get glory for killing and uh there's not a lot of uh, objective play at the moment, I think, because of the delving. But yeah, it's good. Just beat them. Also, we should say, while, while we're on the subject of not being able to get any games in, um, one of the advantages of Underworlds is it does have an online game. Like, you can get it on Steam. Like, if you want to get your head around learning, it has a quite a good port over. It isn't as up-to-date. I think it's only, like, up-to-date as far as Beast Grave or, or something. It's not got every gang. But if you wanted to get your head around playing, um, it has a, yeah, pretty good Steam version. I might have to have a look at that, actually, then. I think I remember, now you mention that, I think I remember seeing that somewhere. And I should actually go and do that and learn how to not suck at the game. We should play some practice games on it yeah. so that I can finally do that streaming channel I've been meaning to do. I was going to say. Where yeah, I only you... play Warhammer themed games on Steam. <laughs> Another branch of Arbiterian's media empire. Yeah, it's going to be me <laughs> sitting there while I go, do I hit that zombie or turn the card over? <laughs> Just going to stream Chainsaw Warrior on hard mode. <laughs> All we're doing. Great, so a, a bit of progress. Have you been looking through the cards though, right? Have you been trying to build the deck? Yeah, I, I, as I say, I, I kind of looked through the essential deck and pulled out a couple of extra objective cards and a couple of ploys and upgrades that I thought were better than the ones that came in the standard deck for the vampires. To be honest, the, the, most of the 
um, thematic upgrades seem really strong. The ones that are specifically for particular characters are obviously very, very good for them. But yeah, there, there was like a handful of cards that I thought the Essentials deck was better for and to make it a little easier to, on me to only be sort of going after particular kind of objectives rather than having... Yeah. A rounded deck. I think that's probably a, yeah a clever idea when you're starting. Build a deck that only only goes for one thing, and then try and do that thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring all the cards with me in case I decide I want to monkey with it later on. But also, uh, Bobby, you've started a YouTube channel. I have indeed. Uh, since the last recording, uh, I've started doing a series called On Sprue Review, where I just take a look at some nice minis on their sprue still. Which is a brilliant idea. Yeah. And also, uh, Violet Sun, just the same as my uh, Twitter and Instagram. So it should be quite easy to find. And you have two up at the moment, Fafnir Ran and New Inquisitor Man. I have four up now. I have um, a Fafnir, I have uh, Malgan Ra, I've got a new war warpsmith from the Chaos Space yeah. Marine range, and yeah, the uh, the commemorative series Inquisitor that I just put up today, in fact. Well, there we go. If anyone wants to have a look at some models uh, being reviewed actually as you get them out of the box and what they're like, then I'll put the link in the description below. Yeah, really useful if you're converting to have a look at where the bits connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. Um, and Gary, now... Uh, you've gone down some competitive wormhole and started looking at tactics articles. Yeah, I've been <laughs> rooting around on the internet. It's like, oh, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, I've got a better idea on how my gang plays on the table. So you've you've almost have you finished painting them already? Oh yeah, mine are finished. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did it like in in like three days with contrast paints. Yeah, yeah, really really quick contrast paint paint job. Yeah, like a contrast green, contrast purple mineral highlights and then, uh, the mirror silver everywhere they've got purple skin they've got <laughs> blue armor okay it's mostly blue and, and green <laughs> yeah yeah no, yeah they're done and I've, I've built a you know my mark one deck i played you at the bar and yeah i got the idea of how they work with just their cards and if we were playing rivals i, I know how they work in rivals and then i've built uh, my deck for rivals plus with you know i've, I've swapped out about 40 percent of the cards put some better ones in great yeah l- looking forward to it <laughs> they're, they're interesting to play against they they're um they're very killy and fast but n- very very fragile even the snake yeah. lady's quite fragile yeah i was really shocked by the number of wounds in there when i sat down having a look at it how many how many wounds are they three of them including one of your your, your good ones it's only got two wounds mm. snake lady only has three mm. which i quite and then the the witch has four which is standard i think for a leader usually. yeah yeah we, we played two games didn't we and did you yeah. not still win both of them though yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I did have really good dice as well i mean my dice were really good on that i, I don't think i missed any attacks did i like, no i think it was definitely a game where i couldn't hit anything every, and you hit everything, everything was hitting and you were beat <laughs> yeah sorry i was going to mention your complete inability to roll a critical on any dice those deny as well <laughs> yeah so i'm so this is what i've been finding so i've i'll get to modeling in a bit but i've played now four games with thunder three games with thunderix and it's interesting so as you know my my gang's quite old in in the world of underworlds they don't have enough cards to form their own deck so i've borrowed three from the essentials deck that were just pretty basic it's interesting what i tended to find was that they've all got quite long range good weapons and they're pretty defendy but their weapons only do one damage until they upgrade the way they get inspired is by completing an objective so after a couple of games i very quickly realized that actually i needed to get rid of like half i need to get rid of half the guards in the deck i've got objective cards and replace them with surges because it's the only way to get them inspired quick enough Mm. to make them damage too which is really really important there's some objectives which want you to run over and get objectives in the enemy's quarter which seems like we've moved two people is something you're never going to do so there's a lot in that deck which don't feel like very good choices for the gang it feels like a gang where what you want is a lot of things you can do on your turn in your half with surge objectives so i've been i've been slowly getting the hang of them they're tricky but i can see how if i can find the right objectives then they would be quite interesting you've seen which cards like sort of stay in your hand and don't get scored and yeah i think after three games it's clear to me now which one's are just very difficult for that team to score. And also ploys that you don't use are are sitting in your hand. And I wonder about the ploys because like Dread Pageant, and it's interesting what you were saying, Bobby, 
I tend to find that the ones that are specific to a person are the ones I use least because you don't know if you're going to get them and that person still be alive. Right, that's the trade-off. It's a good card if the person's still available. I think I need to do a bit of actual deck building now, given that I'm using an old team. And I think when this team were written, no one was expecting you to just play with their cards. Yeah. So, so yeah, regarding painting, um, I'm doing really bad. I'm, I'm behind all of you. Which is weird. I've been, it's been really busy. I'm about to go into like <laughs> 10 days straight in a theatre doing 12 hours a day. So I'm not going to get much time. I was hoping I'd get to base coats before I played you on Thursday, Russ, but I haven't quite yet. I've basically, so far, I have highlighted them the palest silvers I have. I have started putting cop all the other metallics on, so coppers and golds and gunmetal colours. It really would only take me an evening to finish off that. The idea for this gang is that I'm going to do all the metallics and then I'm going to use every weathering method known to man. <laughs> to make them the the dirtiest, rustiest uh, Dwardin floating the skies of uh, Underworlds uh, and then just painting their clothes on top of that. So that's the idea. And I'm quite looking forward to that, but I do need to get round to it. it. They won't take long to paint because of that. All, you know, all of that will take a day or so. I just need to actually get around to doing it and I'm really busy. So I'm behind all of you. I have not got a painted gang yet. Disappointed in you, Ian. I know, I know. <laughs> I was expecting to like, if I wasn't doing this show, then I would have done that thing where I paint them and then also <laughs> paint an army of them yeah. for a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> but I was going to say like, I mean, when we did Taylor Four Gamers last time, you pretty much cheated, painted everything like a day after we started filming and then just revealed the photos one thing at a time. I, I did do that. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um... Yeah. No, this one, this one though, I I think I'm going to be up to the wire. It's very likely that I don't get anything done until I'm on this show until the 30th of March. I go on a holiday from the 31st of March to the 5th of April, and that gives me a week and a half. Yeah. To, right. to get them done and finished. I am quite enjoying the models. They're a bit detailed for me. There's a lot of stuff, but I'm hoping this the weathering thing might solve that. And if it does, I do quite like the idea of an army of them. <laughs> it, but only if I can paint them in like, like yeah. this. If this looks good, if I can just spam them with weathering dyes and it looks good, then yeah, I might do an army. That's one thing I forgot to mention actually about how I'm painting um, Garrock Black Powder. I um I found a YouTube painting channel from a guy called Sloan Ranger. Um, I don't think he actually lives in Sloan Square. I don't think he's that sort of Sloan Ranger. I think he's just, you know, called Sloan or something. Um, but he was doing a painting guide for Gotrek. Oh. And so pretty much like, you know, the 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 white and blue trousers and the skin are all just um how he did it. Yeah, I should actually acknowledge the fact that yeah, I've used his trousers recipe and I'm going to be using his skin recipe. But yeah, Sloan Ranger, I, I've only watched those videos videos of his um but he's actually you know his videos for got trek were really good so i'm actually planning to try and watch some more of his videos and a big ginger beard as well or was it ginger he had a big beard i think it was ginger hang on i've got the page open here you said you're going to give your pirate a big gingery beard oh no uh, well here we go because sloan ranger studio he's got a big ginger beard um yeah sloan ranger studio has a big ginger beard uh, his got trek had a ginger beard and yeah that was the third thing Duh, sorry i'm not <laughs> have you considered getting gary to model for you i Maybe I should get Gary to model for me. Um, he just needs to put on a lot of weight and shave his head. Um, but yeah, there'll be a ginger beard. It's going to be a deeper sort of Albany red rather than a bright gingery um, fire slayer. But it's going to be a gingery beard. Well, that looks like we've all made some progress in, in the two weeks since we last did this. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, we have one update left before we get inevitably to this event, which feels very short. Uh, we'll reconvene in two weeks and see how far we've got. Um, until then, let's meet and try and play Underworlds online, I guess. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.